So this problem is one from basic mechanics and you'll have to use Newton's laws of motion in order to find out the acceleration of the system. So the question is find out the condition when the system starts to accelerate. Okay. And the setting of the system such that we have a wedge which has this angle alpha and then on the top of the wedge we have this uh, pulley which redirects the tension so if i have to draw a force body diagram if i consider this object here there are only two forces acting on it one is the tension acting from the string and Another one is the weight, which is, let's say, weight 2, which is M2G. The forces that are acting on M1, we have W1, which is equal to M1G. And then we have this tension, T. And there might be friction forces. So, for example, if the object or the system accelerates in this direction, then the velocity will be in that direction. And then the uh, frictional force will be acting in this direction. So, this is F, F, R. And this is going to be equal to B mu S. So the whole system is supposed to be in static mode and then it's about to accelerate. That's why mu s, right, is the, uh, is the maximum value uh, for the static uh, friction coefficient, which is the special value we've been looking for. So um, this is pretty easy. If it needs to be accelerating, then... Uh, assume the acceleration is a, so t uh, minus, supposedly it accelerates in this direction, so we have minus t plus w2 equals m2a, and then for t, what do we have? We have, we have just t, right, so t minus and then plus m2g equals m2a. So this is our first equation. Okay. Equation number one. Let us call it. In here, this is interesting. So the coordinate system we should use or should choose can be like this. You can use any coordinate, but uh, I believe the most useful one will be this one. So this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. So this will be x-hat and this will be y-hat. Now the tension force and the friction force are on the x-axis. That's interesting. But the weight force is not on the x-axis or y-axis. So uh, this W1 force is the one that needs to be resolves into these two directions. So the first one is of course in this direction. So if this is alpha, this is also going to be alpha. Along the y-axis, since there is no acceleration, uh, we have w1, it's going to have a negative sign plus n, and that is going to be zero. So n equals w1 which is m1g cosine of alpha okay so that's the equation number two now along the x-axis what do we have we have if this is the positive direction then t is positive uh, and then in the opposite direction are working two forces one is friction and the other one is of course the component of W which is 
m1 g sine theta and this is going to be m1 a is the acceleration is along the x-axis so t equals what do we have for t t equals the frictional force which is mu s times m mu s times n but n is m1 g cosine alpha and then what do we have minus m1 g sine alpha sine alpha i think i've written theta here mistakenly it should be alpha and then this should be equal to m1 a i can substitute for t this equation here so t will be equal to m2g minus m2a so t equals m2g minus m2a equals the whole thing here right i'm sorry this is this was going to be a plus and this is going to be a plus sign okay because i've sent everything to the right side so i have mu s m1 g cosine of alpha plus m1 g sine of alpha uh, plus m1 a so again let's to rearrange things on the one side we have m1 a plus m2 a so we can factor out a so it gets m1 plus m2 a on the other side what do we have we have m2 g minus mu s m1 g cosine alpha minus m1 g sine alpha right i think that's all of it and then um we can factor out g from everyone and then the acceleration becomes g over m1 plus m2 and inside we have m2 minus mu s m1 cosine alpha minus um, m1 g sine alpha okay so in order for the acceleration to be non-zero or slightly over zero a needs to be slightly greater than or equal to zero and the condition it yields for us is m2 has to be greater or equal to mu s m1 and then cosine alpha and then we have plus m1 um sorry there shouldn't be a g here this g must go and then i have m1 sine alpha so now the dimensions are all correct uh, all of it uh, have the dimension of mass because sine alpha and sine alpha uh, do not have any dimension and mu s uh, also doesn't have any dimension